put your hands together for Port Mannion from the Irish or Pan Peace Neutrality Alliance. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, I'm trying to avoid repetition. Uh, I don't know, there's nothing worse than you standing here and everybody repeating what everybody else has said. But as Peter has said, we've been involved in defending and promoting Irish neutrality for 26 years. Uh, and our demand has been uh, that you know, neutrality is enshrined in the Irish Constitution uh, and that we are not involved in any military alliance. You know, that, that, that is the wrong way, way to go. Uh, and from the beginning, we have, we have condemned uh, what is happening uh, in uh, Ukraine. But we have realized that ramping up the war is not what to do. So from the very beginning, we demanded A, that there be a ceasefire, B, that there would be negotiations, and C, that those negotiations would be under the chairmanship of the Secretary General of the United Nations. Now we would make, sort of say, there can't be negotiations. People uh, don't trust each other. Well, as the American Peace Council have pointed out, of course they don't trust each other. If they trusted each other, there wouldn't be war. But uh, sometime, sooner or later, they still won't trust each other and there will be negotiations. It's a question of how many people are killed in the meantime. But let us remember, last year, at the height of the conflict, there could be negotiations over the question of grain exports. There was an initiative taken then. That should have been built on. And it wasn't built on. And we should ask the question, why? And we should ask, as the previous speaker has said, why, when we were in the United Nations, on the, on the Security Council of the United Nations, we took not one scintilla of action in order to promote negotiations, to promote uh, a, 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 a ceasefire. And you know, that is the most serious indictment of our two years on the UN Security Council. The second thing is we must realize that this has been jumped upon as an excuse to push us further uh, in, into uh, NATO and to move away from the triple lock, which means that Irish troops cannot go abroad on any mission unless <coughs> it's agreed by the Iraqis, agreed by the Nero, and it's not a mission agreed by the United Nations. Right now, <coughs> the government are hell bent on changing that. So they want to move away. So they think. They, they can t t put troops into missions which have been agreed by the, U by the EU, but not agreed by the United Nations, possibly even condemned by the United Nations. So that, that the U EU becomes the arbiter of what our military policy is. And I say that is a policy which we have opposed right from the very beginning. We opposed it in every treaty where it was, be where it was, being, where it was being proposed. Uh, I see uh, Jim Roach here. <coughs> And I think the question of the hypocrisy. Why is this the only important war? Why is the massacre of Palestinians or of Yemenis not important? And we should hit across on the hypocrisy uh, <coughs> of, the, of the Irish government. I just want to finalize by this. In the middle of the First World War, the most revolutionary demand at that time was bread and peace. Now, the most revolutionary demand is peace and talk. That was then, this is now, and that's what I totally believe in, and that's what Pana believes in. Thank you. Thanks, thanks very much, Paul.